first thing that I'm training means. It's the other one too. Um, hello everyone. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm also going to shorten my presentation, so I'll try to point out only the most uh, what what I think are the most relevant outcomes for you. Um, so I, I think, in, from the point of view of methodology, we use the same as the other partners. So I'm not going to go into that, but I think it's uh, important for me to say that our starting point was slightly different because what we uh, decided to, to explore as, as a research question was what kind of discrimination uh, mostly affects young people in Italy, so in spite of their um, ethnic background or gender or oh, this, this is, you will see that of course these aspects uh, will came out but we didn't start from that. Uh, another thing I should say, because it, I think it has an impact on our results, is that um, the Italian national and local governments in the past few years made a big effort in uh, trying to tackle the, the issue of discrimination uh, among young persons from the point of view of um, education. So uh, there are different programs both in um, the standard educational curricula and in other informal training activities that are offered to young persons on this topic. Um, so these are some of the uh, programs uh, I was actually uh, mentioning. Uh, so what we found out, I'm going to focus on that. So uh, of course we are talking about young persons, so schools are uh, a very important setting of uh, discriminatory practices and especially those related with sexual orientation and bullying. So uh, according to the literature review we made, you can find, read some of the figures, I'm not going to go through them, but um, these are the two types of discrimination which are more frequent uh, among uh, young persons in schools. And again, it has to do with schools, uh, and it's the topic of counseling. For me, this is very important because I think it's, uh, it can have a very severe impact on the future life and transi transition to adulthood of uh, young persons. So, uh, discriminatory counseling uh, means that uh, young persons are advised to choose their high schools and following to that, of course, for their education based on gender and racial origin and not really on the basis of their attitudes or their wishes or their skills. And I think this is a, a relevant uh, topic that should be tackled. Concerning gender, uh, I think it might be quite surprising, but what we found out from, uh, from figures, of course, we should go through that a little bit more in detail, but it's young men um, result to be more discriminated than young women uh, from the point, as far as we talk about um, uh, migration backgrounds or racial discrimination. Uh, I think it has to do probably with fear. Uh, the public opinion uh, and media in Italy convey this uh, image of young migrant men as being dangerous uh, in respect to women and I think that's one of the reasons that can explain why they are result to be victim of uh, discrimination more often. But of course young girls result uh, to be more frequently victims of sexual violence than older women. So there is an issue uh, with young girls. Um, Employment. Uh, employment is another setting of discrimination for young persons. Uh, for example, the racial discrimination uh, starts already from the internship phase. So there, there are a lot of reports of uh, young students uh, from migrant backgrounds that cannot access or have difficulties in accessing internship opportunities. And again, this has an impact on their future career. Uh, migrants have, have a lower social capital and that's very important, at least in our country, I suppose in most countries, in terms of the 
uh, opportunities you have to find a job. They don't know a lot of people, they are not backed up by persons who are influent in the community. And I think this is again interesting. Uh, there are evidences of an increasing discrimination which is based on physical appearances. So people who are maybe overweight or people who for some reason do not correspond to the standard uh, image of being uh, pretty or handsome have more difficulties in accessing employment opportunities. And I think this is interesting uh, and maybe a new if we focus on women, then to all, all that I mentioned, we should have a gender pay gap, which is still in our, our country and most European countries. Discrimination of paid women, this is, has already been mentioned, so I'm not going to go through it again. And uh, gender stereotypes in uh, giving counseling concerning uh, further education and uh, job. Racism. 50% of migrant youth says they have rarely perceived racist behavior toward them. It means that the other half, in fact, did. And as I mentioned, boys are more often victims of, of this kind of discrimination than girls. Um, concerning then, I will come now to, to the conclusion, the, the training needs and, and what we found out also from the field work. Uh, young persons uh, in Italy are pretty much aware and sensitive concerning the topic of discrimination. It's familiar to them, they can say what it is, and they can detect it, in, in, at least in the most simple uh, uh, situation. And I think, as I mentioned at the beginning, this can be seen as a consequence of these efforts in terms of um, education. And this is especially true for racial discrimination and gender-based discrimination, which has been um, on the focus of, uh, of attention in the past few years in Italy. Uh, on the other hand, um, the, the figures and data show that there is an under-reporting of discrimination, especially from young persons, and uh, they don't really know what to do. So they can perceive that they have been victims of discrimination, but they don't know what they can do to overcome it or to find some kind of um, support. So um, I think in terms of conclusions, uh, we could say that as, as Joanna mentioned, there is definitely a lack of research concerning young persons and discrimination. So age, and I'm talking to the researchers who are here in the room, age and gender should be included in studies on discrimination. This is not always uh, the case at the moment. There are some forms of discriminations which, in our opinion, would deserve more attention than they have now uh, for different reasons. For example, religious discrimination is not a big issue in Italy, but we don't really have a lot of research backing the uh, up solution or uh, uh, better understanding of that. Institutional discrimination and age discrimination in itself. If you think about it, age discrimination is one of the least uh, studied form of discrimination uh, and normally it has to do with older persons. So there, we don't know much about age discrimination when it comes to young persons. And to, to conclude, uh, as I said, uh, I think uh, at least in our national context, um, young persons do understand what is discrimination, so that's the first step and it's a good thing but less has been done in terms of how we can help them reacting uh, to this form, to discrimination. And it has to do with legal education, but also uh, I think uh, it has a lot to do with attitude and empowerment. So we should keep in mind the two sides uh, of, of this man. Thanks.